Ben Sass of Nebraska. He's joining us from Capitol Hill. He is a member of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Uh, Senator, good morning. Thank you for being here. Before this latest round of sanctions, uh, you called the president's approach to Putin too little too late. Have you changed that view hearing what came out yesterday? Um, I am glad that the administration increased the sanctions yesterday. There's still a lot more to do. Your graphic there showed the difference between some of the sanctions that have been levied and some that haven't. Uh, let's talk about why the ones that haven't been levied should be added to the list. But before sanctions, let's just back up and say at an intelligence and a defense level, um, we've done some things, but we've not done enough at an intelligence level. One of the things that the U.S. intelligence community did that we'll look back on as really important is we intentionally got out to the world how Putin, who's a constant liar, was planning to lie to create a pretext for his invasion. Nobody believes now that Ukraine was a threat to him because the U.S. intelligence community did a good job of showing what he was constructing as a lie to justify this completely unjustifiable uh, invasion of its peaceful neighbor, you're Ukraine. You're right, Senator. You're, you're absolutely right. The intel community did do an amazingly precise job here. They, they got it right, and we should note that. On the subject of getting it right, though, in hindsight, was there anything that the U.S. government could have done, might have done to prevent this, which now feels like an inevitable takeover of Ukraine? Absolutely. Uh, going back to 2014, we should have been arming the Ukrainians. Putin uh, poisoned political opponents in 2004. He invades Georgia in 2008. He invades Ukraine and takes Crimea in 2014. He shoots down a civilian airliner again and again without consequences. 2016, he meddles in the U.S. election. He poisons Navalny again in 2020. He amasses 150,000 troops on the border, and the U.S. And, and Europe are just sort of slumbering giants saying, well, hopefully he doesn't mean bad. Here's who Putin is. He means bad. He's evil. He has big weapons. He has big will. You may think he's a genius. You may think he's a madman, but he's got will and he's got weapons. We can't be indifferent to this. We should have been arming the Ukrainians a lot more to date, and we need to do more starting now. Senator, we've been talking about the global oil prices soaring. Um, and the administration says that targeting the in in energy industry would only hurt Americans at the pump. Should Americans be willing to pay more um, to end this crisis? Well, first, the American people have to understand that the last 77 years, going back to 1945, have known unbelievable peace. And one of the benefits for that has been unbelievable prosperity. But the world is a broken and dangerous place. There are lots of sinners. All of us are in our hearts. Uh, but not everybody has Putin's weapons. And we need to recognize that appeasement has never worked against a man like Putin. He'll have to be stopped at some point. Let's be clear. Nobody's talking about putting troops on the ground in Ukraine. But we need to be absolutely certain that Putin understands that we and all of our NATO allies stand together and that we will arm the Ukrainians and that we're going to put pressure on people like Germany who've been unwilling to cut off the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is one of the main sources of cash for Putin. So the administration has a very important internal debate, which is legitimate, about whether or not certain energy sanctions could drive up prices in ways that could accidentally benefit Putin. Because, to quote John McCain, uh, Russia is mostly just a gas station masquerading as an nation right now. Uh, our battle is not with the 200 million Russian people, 200 plus, um, but it is with Vladimir Putin, the madman. And so there are important internal debates about specific tactics around energy sanctions. But the American people need to be brought along to understand that peace and prosperity comes because the U.S. has secured a global order that made it the case that people like Putin couldn't just dance across borders like we see happening now. He will have to be stopped. Senator Sass, I think you'll appreciate this story. I was in L.A. last week, and I went to a food truck because I like fine dining. Same. And I was placing my order, and I noticed that the woman had an accent. I asked her where she was from, and she said, Ukraine. I said, oh, my gosh, you're from Ukraine. What are you thinking about what is happening in your country? She said, we think you all are exaggerating. We're fine. I've talked to my relatives, my family. We're shopping. The kids are playing in the street. We're grocery shopping. I called her last night, Senator, and she said, now everything the American government and the American media said was true. And now we are shocked and we are shattered and we just want people to help us. So I want to know outside of sanctions and arming the Ukrainian people, what can we, what should we do? I just heard you say we need to do more, but what does that look like? Because now the people of Ukraine in the last 48 hours, the last three days really, are totally shattered by this. It's, yeah. Even though Gail, it's predicted, 
they're, they're very surprised. Thank, thanks for your story, Gail. I've heard similar stories from Ukrainians in Nebraska over the last 48 hours. So we talked about defense. Uh, President Biden needs to send an emergency supplemental defense request to the Congress now, and we need to be arming the Ukrainians. We need to be sharing actionable, and actionable intelligence uh, with the Ukrainian resistors and with their military so they can kill the invading Russians. We need to have more sanctions, but we also need to have a kind of lifestyles of the rich and famous made for TV uh, Russian jackasses in London show where people understand why the Ukrainian billionaires who've been enabling Putin need to be perp walked out of Western and free countries and sent back to live in the hellhole tyranny that Putin wants to create in Moscow. These guys are getting rich off enabling Putin, but they don't really want to live as his next door neighbor because they know the guy's unstable. They know the world is, is dishonorable if Putin has more power. And so we need people in London. We need the British government to step up with more targeted sanctions against Russian billionaires in their city. We, we we need to be doing a lot more that also prepares for the refugee crisis that's coming to Poland and beyond. And I'll, I'll commend the president yesterday at sending more U.S. troops uh, to Poland and recognizing that the immig immigrant crisis that's going to flood west into Poland and Germany uh, is going to have a humanitarian element where you're going to need a lot of U.S. Um, manpower to help with some of that. Senator Ben Sass, never uh, one who holds back, and you didn't this morning. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll have you back soon as the uh, crisis continues in Ukraine. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for the invite, Tony.